think one of the most challenging things for us, for us humans, is to have faith, to trust. We're so focused on circumstances, or what I call, in general terms, world consciousness. Anything that is a sense has a sense of world consciousness too, meaning that you're conscious of a world, of your story, of your life, of your circumstances, of your situation, of the world out there, of the problems, of that subject-object relationship. Because we're so focused on that world consciousness, because we're so clenched in that, we find it difficult to trust, to trust the process, to trust whatever's unfolding, or to even have a sense, in, to begin with, to even have a sense of faith that there is a particular order to things, that there is a particular intelligence to what's unfolding. If you don't have that conviction even a little bit, then trust is practically impossible because you're relying only on calculations, management, causality, space-time, reasonable, logical decisions. If that world, con world consciousness is all you're used to, it's all you sort of are convinced of, then trust becomes very difficult. If that is your primary reality, if you see that as the primary government of life, so to speak, reason, logic, cause, effect, predictions made on what you can perceive right now, meaning that whatever we perceive right now, we use that as a way to predict what's going to happen, where things are going to flow into. We think we know what's ahead based on how things usually turn out. So if you have this kind of, if this is your predominant worldview, then again, faith is very difficult. Because faith requires a letting go of that. It requires a letting go of that calculated, managed way of being. When things don't go the way you want them to go, or they're threatened to no longer go the way you want them to go, and your calculations fail you, there's no decision you can think into existence that would make things better, then suddenly we're forced to trust. And being forced to trust but not wanting to trust is usually what we know of as depression or something similar form of that. Whereas if you'd actually take that opportunity to trust, we call that happiness. The more you trust, the more you'll trust because it confirms itself. So the more you try it, the more you double your little toe in the water of the unknown, the more comfortable you'll become with it, the more you'll start to trust, trust. So it's a process of getting trusting, trust, the process of starting to trust that you can actually trust. It's actually reliable. Trust is trustable. Faith is reliable. In our society, we don't generally have much experience with that. It's not, it's not spoken out loud. Uh, all that's spoken out loud of is again the calculus. <coughs> oh, this doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? Why are you throwing away your future? But the more you do it, the easier it becomes. The more automatic it becomes until there is no option not to trust. Even as your personality sort of freaks out over stuff, there's this unshakability in the background that's just sort of watching. It's like, yeah. okay, you can freak out if you want, that's okay. You can freak out a little bit, a little bit more, okay, a little bit more, go ahead, it's okay. But once you start to actually trust in trust, the more you become like a fish in water, just becomes comfortable. Even when the circumstances aren't always comfortable, when the personality is not always comfortable, it's only because it's predicting the future based upon what it sees now. You see, calculated, cause and effect based views. Can you see that in your own life? Every day? Every hour? Every minute maybe, even? Trust becomes so comfortable that you don't even want to not to trust. Even the outcome Usually speaking, even the outcome that you think or that the personality thinks it needs to manage, it needs to freak out about because it doesn't seem to be going that way. Things seem to be jeopardized. Even the outcome that you desire is not as large as the simple desire for the experience of trust itself. And when you want something more than something else, you get exactly what you want more of and less of what you want less sort of like a law, it just works like that. So if you want stress, if you think you don't want stress, if you think you want trust, but it's not working out for you, you don't really want trust. 
You want the outcome more than you want the experience of trust. Because the moment you want to trust, you want that trust itself. Uh, I don't care what happens. I'm not going to predict the future. I'm not going to foresee what's going to happen based upon logical calculations that I make based on what I see right now. I'm going to trust that there is an intelligence to all of this. And that trust is what I want more than the outcome and the management that comes with it, the stress that comes with it. So the moment that your desire for trust exceeds your desire for the outcome, you'll have exactly that trust. And you'll become so comfortable with that trust that you want to repeat that. And so you repeat it. And once you repeat something, often enough, you become it. It becomes you. It becomes a habit. It becomes an addiction in a sense. It becomes natural. Sometimes when something happens circumstantially in my life that sort of threatens wherever I'm at or wherever, I, wherever I'm comfortable or whatever I'm comfortable with, or like I can see the personality sort of, I can see the sense, the option, like, oh, this is one option. I could enter this bubble of worry. I could enter, enter this sphere of concern and thought and calculations. Or I can just stay right where I am and not even be aware of it in a sense, not even enter that world consciousness, that subject-object relationship. I can just stay right here and not enter that bubble. It's proposed. Personality proposes, here you go. Why don't you, why don't you start worrying? And I'm like, eh, I like the alternative better. And so trust becomes natural. You, you start to become more and more sensitive to anything that sort of proposes you to step out of that trust. Whereas, in the beginning, it may feel like you need to step into the trust. After all, it becomes like, all you need to do is just no longer step out of the trust. And you can do it whenever you want to. You can have a little taste of that. It's like, in the beginning, you have a little taste of the trust. You can have a little taste of the fear and the anxiety again if you want to. Just double your little toe in, in the bubble of fear. It works. It can work. And it's a fun experience, especially once trust is your predominant reality. It's actually fun to play around with. It's actually fun to experience sometimes. To experience the nitty gritty nastiness of that. With full consciousness. With full awareness that you're doing it. That you're choosing that. That you're agreeing to that. And so more and more you start to see that. You only suffer about outcome. You only have psychological suffering whenever you want to. I only suffer when I want to and I realize that. Whenever I suddenly suffer in one way or the other, there's an instant recognition that that's what I chose. And so it's not really suffering anymore, even if it's uncomfortable. Even if it seems invested, it has this space around it at the same time. And then usually the decision naturally is made to let go of it. But even if that's not made, even if I do have a genuine desire to worry about something, sometimes it occurs. It doesn't happen a lot, but occasionally that happens. Where I find myself suddenly suffering over some outcome. And I realize that that's what I want. And so I'm okay with that. Like I also don't need to not suffer. That's also a freedom that comes with sort of marinating in this and it becoming natural is that you don't necessarily need to feel free and trust all the time because your trust is so deep that you know that you're trusting. You know that you are faith. You know that you are okay. Even if you choose to want to worry for a moment. You no longer have to feel peaceful all the time. That in itself is an obsession too. That's not trusting. So sometimes to suffer is actually to trust. But this is just something to have fun with for yourself. Play around. Sometimes to suffer is the more authentic option than not to suffer. If that is what is. Then if you try to get rid of that, if you try not to suffer, if you try to get back to the peace, you're not really trusting. So can you have trust while you're suffering? That trust, that suffering is part of the trust. It's part of the bliss. So then it, trust becomes a sort of transcendent quality. Transcendent simply meaning it's no longer depending upon trust or no trust. It's just all pervasive trust, no matter what happens. And you can't do this, it just is. And the more you do it, the more you trust, the more that becomes obvious, as already always being the case. So then it's actually impossible not to trust, even when your personality is not trusting because it's choosing not to trust because it chooses that it wants to be invested in that particular project or outcome or worry which is fine can you fully 
accept that? Can you fully give it permission, your full energetic permission to suffer? Is your trust so deep that you can suffer? And then usually there is a, a bliss or a freedom or a sense of peace simultaneously with the suffering. If you can even call it suffering still. Do you recognize anything like that in your own experience? <laughs> okay, good. Sweet. <laughs>